Hey guys, flip to the page with the body systems. It's the second to last page. It has a diagram that looks similar to this. So first thing we have is going to be the nervous system. Um, the nervous system, the main function of that is going to be cell to cell communication. Now, how are these cells actually capable of talking to one another? That's because they have receptors on them. Remember, receptors are really just a fancy type of protein. They are on the top of the cell membrane and they allow cells to actually talk to one another. This is one way that the nervous system is going to be capable of maintaining homeostasis. Remember, another name for homeostasis that they like to use a lot is gonna be dynamic equilibrium. Another thing that I've noticed that they've been putting on the regions a lot is reaction to a stimuli. So if something changes in the environment, what winds up happening is that your body needs to react to that. Um, that could be something like body temperature, for example. If it's really cold out, you'll start shivering. If it's really hot out, that's going to be when you start um, sweating. Right? So reaction and response to a stimuli. Next up is the endocrine system. You're really likely to see a question on this. Uh, the endocrine system is gonna make hormones. Remember, hormones, once again, those are just a specific type of protein. And by producing those hormones, your cells can talk to one another. So we're talking about cell-to-cell -cell communication. That's what's going on in this picture here. Notice we have the endocrine gland. The endocrine gland goes, it releases a hormone or a protein. Many times they call hormones chemical messengers. Yes, you should be familiar with the fact that they're gonna use those two interchangeably. Now what you'll notice about this is that we have non-target cells and then we have target cells. The target cells, right, have these receptors on them and the receptors are the correct shape, meaning that the hormone matches up with like a puzzle piece or like a lock and key with the receptors. This protein hormone can talk then to this target cell, whereas this non-target cell will not be able to pick up the message. Other ideas that you need to know about the endocrine system is going to be about a feedback mechanism. This is a term for some reason that is just not sticking. This is so that your body can maintain homeostasis. Remember, homeostasis is talking about a normal or steady state. If you were to see this in a graph form, it would look like this, where there are normal fluctuations throughout the day but even with those fluctuations, if you were to take an average, right, you would fall consistent every single day. An example of a feedback mechanism could be blood sugar. You eat something, your blood sugar is gonna go up. When your blood sugar starts going up, your body recognizes that. A message is sent to your pancreas to say, hey, start making insulin so that then the blood sugar could be lowered. Another example, in the middle of the night, you probably haven't eaten in a long time. Since you have not eaten in a long time, your blood sugar winds up decreasing. As your blood sugar decreases, your body starts to make a hormone called glucagon. Glucagon releases glucose into your bloodstream so that your blood sugar once again remains stable. Never too high, never too low. Another example of feedback mechanism would be body temperature. As I mentioned before, sweating or shivering in order to keep your body at more or less a constant 98.6. On the next page, we have insulin. Insulin is a protein hormone that is produced by the pancreas. A lot of people did not know this on the test we just had. So make sure that you know what's going on here. Insulin, whenever I see that, I look at the L and I think to myself, insulin lowers blood sugar level. Remember, sugar could also be called glucose. Those two are gonna be synonyms for each other. It makes it so that it never goes too high or too low. In this picture here, on occasion, 
they'll have you actually go and label what is the pancreas. The pancreas is structure C, and I've highlighted it in yellow. And again, when we're talking about insulin or blood sugar, insulin helps to lower blood sugar when it gets too high. Glucagon helps to raise blood sugar when it gets too low. And that makes sure throughout the day it's constant. People who are unable to regulate their blood sugar level have a condition known as diabetes. So diabetics unable to regulate. Remember, regulate means control blood sugar. Next up, we have the immune system. When we're talking about the immune system, it fights off infection. This picture, very common picture on the regions. White blood cells, they have, well, here it says two, but I'm going to add one more function. They make antibodies. Antibodies are going to be a specific type of protein. So antibodies are proteins produced by white blood cells that fight off infection. Since they are proteins, they have a specific shape. Remember, specific shape is going to dictate function. The other thing they can do is engulf pathogens. Think about them kind of like Pac-Man. They go, they surround the pathogen or the microbe, and they're more or less eating it. It goes into a tiny vacuole, digestion enzymes work, and then it breaks down the pathogen. The other thing that white blood cells do is they remember pathogens. So once you get sick, typically you're not going to get sick with the same exact disease again. That's what this picture is showing. Here's an antigen. An antigen is a protein ID tag. Now many people in the test were confusing the words antigen and antibody. My advice with that is if it's a short answer question, write down protein. Protein is more general, yes, but protein will always be correct. If you misuse the word antigen or antibody, you're not going to get the credit for it. So an antigen is a protein ID tag on every cell. The antigen in your body, though, your white blood cells go around and they go, hey, you're supposed to be here. But when you get sick with the bacteria, they think you're not supposed to be here. High alert, start making antibodies, start engulfing those pathogens. And antibodies, remember, these are what your body makes. Your white blood cells inside your body make these in response to an antigen. A pathogen can also go by the word microbe. Those two they use interchangeably. A microbe could be a virus or a bacteria. It disrupts homeostasis causing illness or death. Again, another vocabulary word, I already mentioned it, but antigens are located on pathogens. They act as ID tags. Technically, all cells have antigens. It's just the ones that are inside of your body, your body does not react to because they think, hey, you're supposed to be here. Vaccine, dead or weakened pathogen injected into the body to produce an immune response. An immune response stimulates production, I know this is not enough room, of antibodies. Meaning, make antibodies. It only protects you from a specific illness because every illness has different antigens. If you get the flu, it has antigen A. If you get the chicken pox, that has antigen B. Therefore, you don't have antibodies against antigen B. Your body needs to make them. An allergy is an immune response. This is important. I know in the last test that we just had, people didn't know what system was responsible for an allergy. That's going to be your immune system. Your immune system makes antibodies. That's why a lot of times when people have an allergic reaction, they have similar symptoms to when they're sick. Dry, itchy eyes, maybe difficulty breathing, wheezing, things that are associated with illness, right? That's because your immune system is responding to whatever that allergen is. 
It could be pollen. It could be pet dander. It could be something like a food, like peanuts, shellfish. It's supposed to be harmless, but for whatever reason, your body makes antibodies against it, causing that response. And here it says proteins on the harmless substance. Those are the antigens that are on there. And as you know, you can be allergic to one thing, but not to something else. The example on the test was allergic to peanuts and not allergic to walnuts.